All right, you guys. We got to do this part over. This is uh, part of chapter two on Mafia 2. The game crashed on me, so let's see if we can try this again. Ciao, Vito. Okay, you still feel like snagging that car? You kidding me? Absolutely. Well, here's your chance. Looks like we lost it. So how do you like the car? Not too bad. I think I'll keep it. All right, let's go find ourselves a body shop. They provide the kind of services we're looking for. Hey, that don't sound cheap. Don't worry about it. I got it covered. Just find any body shop. I know the guy who runs it. Here, park right here in front of the garage door. Okay, now honk your horn. How can I help you? A license plate. <laughs> For you, no problem. There you go. Give her a couple of... For a new set of wheels? Take your pick, pal. Pick a color, any color. Save the gas in your tank and the rubber on your tires. Resources that are so very vital to the war effort. So the next All right, time next you should introduce yourself to Mike Bruski. He'll probably have some work for you. All right, where is he? He owns a junkyard over in Riverside. You can't miss it. Hey, who's that guy back there? What guy? The guy at the body shop. Oh, Tommy. He's my buddy's nephew. He's kind of quiet, but let me tell you, the kid's some hell of a dancer. Saw him at the old dance hall in Oyster Bay a couple of weeks ago. He had all the broads going nuts. Do I detect a hint of, uh, jealousy? Are you kidding? I don't need no dance moves. I got charm, my friend. Here, I'll give you some of my lines, so maybe you won't have to spend so many nights with Rosie Palm and her five sisters. Hey, here's one. Hey, is that a mirror in your pocket? Because I can see myself in your pants. Here, I got another one. If I could rearrange the alphabet, I'd put you and I together. Oh, oh, come on.
Oh, this one never fails. Hey, baby, that's a nice outfit. It'll look good crumpled up at the foot of my bed in the morning. And this works for you. Oh, here, here's a good one. Hey, do you know the difference between sex and conversation? No? You want to go back to my place and talk? You got problems, you know that? How about this one? Why don't we go back to my place and play house? You be the door and I'll slam you. Oh, that was bad. Hey, when you measure seven soft, you don't have to be good with words. You get my drift? That's Mike's junkyard there. Just drive through the gate. Look who's hey, here. Hey, Mikey boy, what's going on? Shit, Mike, you can wash <coughs> your fucking hands once in a while. Now I need a fucking bed. Hey, I've been working. Working people occasionally get dirty, you know? Besides, nah, I man, just wiped the whole hand print on that coat. The same fucking fuck rag you used, used to clean the toilet, you, you filthy, filthy fuck. fuck. Put a lid on it. What, what are you, from the health department, or you want to do some business? <laughs> business, of course. This here's my friend Vito. Vito, this is Mike Bruski, but don't shake his hand. I ain't got that much soap at home. Nice to meet you, Vito. Hey, uh, me and Vito go way back. He just come back from overseas and he needs some cash. So I figure he can help with your uh, supply problem. I can vouch for him. Uh-huh. Okay. Joe told you about our side business, right? Yeah. I only want regular cars, nothing fancy. You get a cut of every car. I take as many as I can handle. And don't bring no cops around, okay? They follow you here. I don't know your ass from Jesus. You get me? Got it. God damn it, Mike. You put your grubby mitts on my fucking coat. I paid a <laughs> fortune for this thing. <laughs> All right, calm down or I'll stick them up your ass, you sissy. You know, dry cleaning course Jesus. these days. Oh, right. And who knows if they can even get this filled out. You shut up. Vader, listen to me. I need a Walter Coop today. I got a few people looking for parts, but I can't find a car. Because you don't know where to look. Every time I drive down Hunters, I see one parked by a bar there. I think the place is called the Lone Star. Isn't that a move in your neighborhood? I'll stick out like a sore thumb. All right, look, I'll give you 350 bucks for it. It's worth the risk, right? 400. <laughs> All right, deal. Uh, Vito, come on, let's go on. Diamo. Meantime, I'll be sending you the cleaning bill for my coat. Yeah, I'll change my address, you rat prick. Okay, listen up. This is your maiden voyage, so to speak. So try not to fuck it up, eh? Here, Vito, take this, just in case. Hey, nice. Hey, Mike, you mind if I test this thing out here? Sure. Knock yourself out. Here you go. Aim for that old wreck over there. A bad shot. Hey Vito, see if you can hit the gas tank. Did I leave gas in that thing? There's a Polak joke there, but I'll leave it alone. Oh yeah, that reminds me. Fuck you. All right, that's enough shooting. We got work to do. Go out the way we came in and get on the main highway going west. Don't go back through the city. Go right up here. So how's it feel to be back? Good. I feel a lot better with some money in my pocket. Hey, what's the rush? Money don't buy you happiness, you know. Get the fuck out of here. I was just fucking with you. Don't worry about the money. 
This little job is just the beginning. Pretty soon you'll be rolling in it. So, Sand Island's still the same shithole it was when I left? No, no, the place actually ain't too bad now. Oh, shit. How the hell did that happen? All the moolies flew south for the winter. Of course it's still a shithole, Vito. You only been gone a couple of years. Gonna take a lot longer than that for that neighborhood to turn around. Them people multiply like rabbits. What are you gonna do? It's even worse than when we was kids. They even got some kind of gang there now. What's their fucking name? Uh, the Beamers, the Boomers, something like that. I don't fucking know. Oh, that's just fucking great. Hey, what are you worried about? They're animals. All they do is sell dope and kill each other. They ain't gonna bother a guy like you. And even if they do, that's why I gave you that pistol. Oh, by the way, you're carrying a gun now? What's the deal with that? Can't do business without it these days. Especially in this fucking neighborhood. You, uh, really know how to inspire confidence, you know that? Days, I'm gonna buy a house here. Look at this guy. Ain't even back a day and he's too good for his old neighborhood. Hey, what are you breaking my balls for? I'm just window shopping. It'll be years before I can afford a place like this. <laughs> you got champagne tastes and beer pockets, my friend. Don't worry, though. I'm gonna help you change that. It's that cream-colored baby over there. Be careful. <clears throat> Do it quick and get the fuck out of there. Break a window if you have to and go. I'll wait for you back at Mike's. What if I run into problems? Then you deal with them. Look, consider this a test. If you fail, I hear they're hiring down at the factory. Right, just asking. Good luck, pal. I see you back at Mike's. Good afternoon. Hey, what the fuck are you doing over there? <clears throat> ah, shit. What you doing, motherfucker?
Supporting our troops abroad. Give them one from Empire Bay, boys. Mission accomplished. How'd it go? Yeah, piece of cake. Except for the fact that the car belonged to a bunch of moolies who immediately tried to kill me right after you left. Eh, probably the bombers. Not this their neighborhood. Guys like that, you don't have to worry about them. They just hang out on the street, talk shit, steal shit, and smoke dope. <sighs> Let's see what we got here. Oh, nice. No stains. Clean. Where the lowlife get the money for this? Probably stole it himself. It's nice, though. How much did I say I'd give you for it again? Six hundred. <laughs> oh, I like you, buddy, Joe. Here's your four hundred bucks. Stop by again, okay? We can do some more business. Yeah, you bet, Mike. I see you, Mike. I'll stop by again real soon. All Me right, too. boys. I'll see you later. Here's your three hundred bananas. I'm taking my cut as the middleman. Next time, you're on your own. All right. Thanks, Joe. All right, let's go home. I'm exhausted. We should take the highway, Vito. <clears throat> All right, you pulled off that job without fucking it up. Nice going. Yeah, but I almost got my ass kicked. I didn't live through the war just to die in Sand Island. Hey, that's all part of the deal, pal. Take it or leave it. Besides, it ain't like you're qualified for anything else. Eh, I guess you're right. Don't worry about it. It's all gonna be a piece of cake. So, uh, what's the story with Prusky? Mike's a good guy to know. He's a little grouchy, but he's always got a scam going. He deals with stolen cars mostly. Spent some time inside a while back. I heard he used to stick up gas stations back in the day. You gonna make him pay the cleaning bill for your jacket? Nah, I'll let that one slide. I do a lot of business with the guy. Plus, he's got one hell of a temper. One time we was at the track, and some mitt spilled a beer on his wind ticket. Mike beat the shit out of him till he went blind in one eye. For a lousy ten bucks, you believe that shit? Sounds like kind of a scumbag. Hey, you just gotta know how to handle these people. And Mike's a pussycat compared to some of the guys. Hey, is there a safe place to park around here? I don't want to leave this thing out in the street. Yeah, that's why you're parking your car next to mine in the garage. The streets are full of criminals these days. Yeah, the neighborhood ain't what it used to be, huh? If you're hungry, there's some food in the refrigerator. You're hungry, Vito? Take whatever you want from the fridge.
chapter 3 enemy of the state Joe's pleasure, pal. It's Vito speaking. Vito, why didn't you come home last night? I was worried sick. Mama? I didn't know you had Joe's number. And whose phone is this? So have you spoken to Mr. Papalardo? Find yourself a job? Yeah, he told me to come by and see him today. Hopefully he's got some work for me. Okay, Vito. Good luck, mio bambino. All right, hey, bye, Mama. Mom Mama calling and checking up on me. Go to the Southport dock and see Mr. Where we are. You put me on something different today. Little jacket. Chain clothes. Leather jacket. That's my wife. Oh. Uh. Kind of call me, bro.
Let me smack it. Well, close the door. It's windy. What do you want? Uh, yeah, I'm looking for a Mr. Papalotto. Oh, yeah? Why? My name is Vito Scaletta. My old man used to work for him, and I'm looking for a job, so I came here. Well, you're in the right spot, sonny boy. Federico Papayato at your service. You could call me Derek. I think I remember your dad. Good guy, but drank like a fish. What's he up to these days? He's dead. Oh, well, we all gotta go sometime. Right, Steve? Man, sure, Derek. Put man on that fault to eat. So you need a job, huh? Well, you're in luck. We just got a new shipment to unload. Steve will show you around. Now scram, my steak's getting cold. Uh, follow me. Say, Father, you keep walking. Man. What are you doing? Load this pile of crates onto that truck. When you're done, you get ten bucks. If something what? gets lost or broken, you get nothing. Start now and don't take all day. Ten dollars. This is gonna be a lot of fun. Who the fuck wants to move boxes around all goddamn day? I gotta load all these damn things up. All this for ten lousy bucks? You gotta be kidding me. No, I ain't gonna do all this for ten dollars. Mm, you crazy? Ten dollars? Man, we out of here. Yeah, I'm done. And you can keep the ten bucks. When I said I needed a job, I didn't mean slave labor. Whatever. Get the fuck out of here, then. Don't show your face around here again. Yeah, don't worry. I can make a hundred times more working for Barbaro Incorporated. Wait, you said Barbaro? Joe Barbaro? Yeah, so what? Shit. Nobody who works with Joe would carry crates for ten bucks. What the hell are you doing? Come with me. Now I gotta follow him all over again. What now? Well, this one don't like manual labor. What the fuck? Said he works with Joe Barbaro. Bullshit. We want to load crates if he works with Joe. You'll have to explain this one to me, sonny boy. What's your story? Uh, well, my mother wanted me to come talk to you about an honest job, but... I need some real money, so this ain't gonna cut it. <laughs> Them women. They're all the same. Right, Steve? Sure, Derek. She doesn't want you hanging around with Joe, right? <laughs> my mother was the same way. Look what become of me. Union boss, I got the whole fucking waterfront under my thumb. So how's Joe? Pretty good, I guess. 
How'd you meet up with him? Oh, we go way back to the old neighborhood. I just come back from overseas and he's putting me up until I can get back on my feet. Listen, uh, you gotta understand, a person in my position has gotta be careful. Certainly. So you won't mind if I give Joe a call, right? Nah, go ahead. Now, where'd I put his number? Hey, here it is. Might not be home. That wouldn't be good. Hi, Joe. Hey, this is Derek. Listen, I got this guy here. Uh, what'd you say your name was? Vito. Vito. Man, Vito gonna go ham on y'all. He's a friend of yours. A good friend. I just wanted to check with you first. Uh-huh. Sure. War hero and all that shit. All right, all right. Thanks, then. i talk to you later. Sorry, pal. I had to check you out. Joe says you just come back from Italy. You must be able to handle yourself. You want to make a little more money? I got just the thing. The guys here at the port are supposed to pay a monthly fee to the barber, but half of them never cough it up. I need someone to give them a little nudge. Ten bucks a man. What if they don't need a haircut? Well, then you'll have to convince them otherwise. I see. What if somebody makes a fuss? Then you kick the shit out of them. Well, let's say you teach them a lesson that doesn't require that they miss work. You got it? Which is why Steve ain't doing the job. Right, Steve? Right, boss. Collect at least 150 bucks, I give you 50. Just for walking around, taking it in the Sierra. Well, I'm going to try and cheat me out all kind of money. Of money huh? What do you say? Yeah, hey, it's better than lugging crates around. All right, then. Get going. I'm here to collect the fee for the barber. Uh, yeah. I must have forgot or something. Thanks. Appreciate your cooperation. Hey, pal. Derek needs you to pay the fee for the barber. Sure, here it is. I don't want no problems. Next time, try to pay on time, okay? Thanks. Derek needs you to pay the fee for the barber. What do I have to use a fucking barber for? He'll spit on your head and make it shine. What do you want me to say? Yeah, sure. Here you go. But tell Derek I should be getting a fucking discount. Don't leave it until the last minute next time. Oh, he's the one want to add bad. Hey, pal. Derek needs you to pay the fee for the barber. Look, asshole. I'm not in the mood. Why don't you get out of my face before you get hurt? Ah, no can do, pal. Derek wants his money. Derek can kiss my ass. What's that fat fuck gonna do? Have me killed? Hey, you said it, not me. Why don't you give it a try then, asshole? Anybody else got a fucking problem with paying for the fucking barber? Yeah. 
see my little feet the dollar. Here's the money, boss man. Good job. Here's your share. I watched you take care of Bill. You were good. Steve damn near got his ass kicked when he tried that. Right, Steve? Yeah. Uh -huh. Right, Derek. Here's a bonus for sorting him out. Thanks. The guy's been a real fucking pain. Now get out of here, kid. I gotta be getting back to business. And say hello to your mother for me. Tell her you got yourself a job as my new assistant. Yeah, will do. I'll see you later. And Vito. I almost forgot. Joe called. He wants you should meet him at Freddy's. of a hit-and-run driver. Roger that. Yeah, right in my car. Probably right behind me, too. Can I bum a smoke? Sure. Here, have a big break cigarette. All right. <sighs> wow. These big break whites sure are light. Thanks a bunch. No problem, Marty. No problem is right. Not with these big break whites. Big break filter cigarettes. Rich reds, light whites, and smooth blues. Take a break from it all.
Hey, where the hell you been? I came right over as soon as you called. What's going on? You remember the wise guys we used to see when we was kids? Yeah, why? The guy we're meeting here is one of them. His name's Henry Tomasino. I think he's got something big for us. Yeah, no shit. Yeah. We're done with the small-time jobs. It's time to make some real shuttle. Here, he's coming. Don't say nothing stupid. Hey, Henry, how are you? Hiya, Joe. This the guy? Yeah, this is Vito, an old friend of mine. Good to meet you, Henry. You vouch for him? Absolutely, Henry. Trust him with my life. Okay, listen, I got a job for you. The money's good. I need gas stamps. They're worth the fortune now because of the gas shortage. Where can we get them? In the Office of Price Administration. Uh, that's a federal government agency. Isn't that a little risky? What? Too much for you? No, no, no. Just trying to think of how we can pull it off. Ah, it can't be that hard. The stamps are kept in the safe at night, but the keys are probably around here somewhere. You got somebody inside? Yeah, one of our guys. His sister works there. Can she help us out? Ask her yourself. Her name's uh, Maria and Yellow. Here's the address. Tell her I say you. All right, what about the safe? What if the keys aren't there? That's your problem. But what's the job pay? I'll give you 600 bucks for 10,000 gallons worth of stamps. Okay, we're in. No, no, I need Vito to do this alone. I got another job for you, Joe. So? What do you say, Vito? Yeah, well, sure. Vito got to work hey, you don't forget to take on. a piece with you. You never know what's going to happen. Better to be safe than sorry. I got be. Wait, wait, wait. Oh. This isn't some liquor store stick-up. I want this to be a clean job. If you kill anybody, your cut drops to a third. Gabish. Oh, I man. No problem. Okay, when you're done, you come back in, we'll settle up. All right, I'll see Good you. Good luck, Vito. I can't smoke nobody. I see you around. Well, they're trying to smoke me. This is a stolen car. Soviet Union to determine how Europe will be divided amongst the Allies after Germany. We gotta walk around the back. Shit, the door. Can I help you? Yeah, hello, ma'am. Uh, Henry Tomasino sent me. He said you might be able to help me with a little problem down at the Office of Rice Administration. Yeah, I heard about that. What do you need from me? Uh, I need to get in there tonight. All right. Tell you what. My sister's in the hospital right now. If you give me a lift over there, I'll tell you everything you need to know. It's right across the street from the OPA, so it ain't like you're going to be going out of your way. Sure, no yeah, problem. I gotta get her a ride. Hurry up, lady. Come on. <sighs> wow, these big break whites sure are light. Thanks a bunch. No problem, Marty. No problem is right. Not with these big break whites. Big break filter cigarettes. Rich reds, light whites, and smooth blues. Take around. a break oh. from it all. Okay, let's go. And take it easy behind the wheel, all right? I seen the way you kids drive these days. All right, kid. The place is locked up pretty tight at night, so you gotta get in through the back. They keep the back door open at night? No, but the basement window usually is, so that's how you can get in. You're looking for the safe, right? Yeah, how'd you know? 
Lucky guess. It's on the top floor. So's the director's office. That's where the keys are. Okay. So I go in through a window around the back, then head upstairs to the director's office, right? Right. And be careful. There's guards in there at night. Don't let them see you. Drop me at the hospital right here. The office is across the street. Okay, thanks for the ride, kid. Hear that. Thanks, Maria. I'll see you. I sure did. Man, those things cost as much as a car. How the hell did you afford it? Mary's Uncle Lou passed away a few months back, left us some cash. And you bought yourself a television with it.
That's what I did. You ought to see this thing. Seven inch black and white screen gets all three channels. Wow, sounds fascinating. What, you mean you ain't gonna get one? I'll stick with my newspaper and with my radio, thank you very much. This television's just a fad. We'll see about that, sonny boy. Yeah, so what does Mary think of it? She, uh, she ain't seen it yet. Keep that door for now. Get the keys from the direct office. Ah, raspberries. I'm gonna go make the rounds. Good riddance to you. Any plans for the weekend? Yeah, gonna relax and watch me some television. Well, you bought a television? I sure did. Man, those things cost as much okay. as a car. Okay, this is the director's the office. This is where the key should be. passed away a few months back, left us some cash. And you bought yourself a television. All right, here's the key. Now I gotta get to the safe. see this thing. Seven inch black and white screen gets all three channels. Wow, sounds fascinating. What, you mean you ain't gonna get one? I'll stick with my newspaper and with my radio, thank you very much. This television's just a fad. We'll see about that, sonny boy. Yeah, so what does Mary think of it? She, uh, she ain't seen it yet. 